call the roll, please. Mr. Cox? Here. Ms. Harvey? Here. Mr. Llewellyn? Here. Mrs. Miller? Here. Mr. Mundy? Here. Okay. Right, everyone will please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance.
Dr. Townsend sends out her weekly um, update as well on Thursday, so watch for that information. And as always, be safe, be respectful, be responsible, be kind. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right, it looks like we just have one presentation tonight, and that's with our middle school principal, Mr. Eric Prisick. Come on up, sir. All right, good evening, everybody. Um, it's exciting to be here for Points of Pride to talk about uh, student leadership. Um, and I always admit, whenever we talk about student leadership, I try to get students involved, so we'll have some students who are going to come up and share some more information with you. Um, about some of the formal leadership opportunities that we have at the middle school as well as things that kind of become leadership because student voice like brought it into existence, which is also very exciting. Um, the different uh, uh, teams or organizations we're going to talk about are NJHS, uh, ROCKS, which is really in our experiences, um, student council, and then even our announcements team. Um, so um, I will wait to see if it pops up on the screen, um, but our first uh, speaker, Kylie Dotson, if you want to come on up, she's going to talk to us a little bit about NJHS, National Junior Honor Society, um, as well as its accomplishments um, from the last year, as well as so far this year, and what they might have plans going forward. So, Hello, my name is Kylie Dotson, and I am a new member of National Junior Honor Society. I am in eighth grade, and I am excited to tell you a little bit about what NJHS does. So far this school year, we have raised money for our school by putting together a fall ball dance for the 7th and 8th graders. In doing this, we raised $500 that will go towards school-wide incentives. We will put together more dances this school year to raise money for other charitable organizations. We will also help with the canned food drive and pirate packs. Some of the goals in National Junior Honor Society are to improve the moral, morale at school, helping all students find a reason to have pride, pride in being a West Carrollton Pirate. We will also be helping out in the community with service projects such as cleaning a park and hopefully for the second year in a row, reading to students at the ECC. Thank you for your time and your support in National Junior Honor Society. Thank you very much, Kylie. Um, so like Kylie mentioned, um, here's some photos, um, both from our fall ball dance, which was last Friday, which we had a lot of fun with, um, both organizing and students using it as um, a costume, par costume party option. Um, as well as pictures from a, a huge hit last year was our um, eighth grade students going over to the ECC and reading to um, uh, students over here. And that's something that we plan to do again this year. So um, that, was a, that was a huge, huge hit. So our next um, topic is gonna be rocks ruling our experiences. So Morgan Smith, if you'd like to come on up, she's gonna share you a little bit about um, a rocks leadership team, which is new um, this year and some of the things that they're rolling out as a rocks leadership team, which is a, a, an all girls club. Hello, I'm Morgan Smith and I'm a member of ROCKS. How I would define student leadership in ROCKS is that we are a leadership group that evolves around all girls. We set a good example, encourage others, and support all girls. What I like about student leadership in ROCKS is that we all work together, problem solve, and motivate each other. What interests me in ROCKS is that it's very fun and gave me the opportunity to make friends. In the, in the future, I want ROCKS to be a group that everyone knows it can be a part of. Thank you for your time. Thank you. So something that the leadership group was even doing um, this afternoon, for example, is actually decorating some lockers for birthdays to celebrate for, um, girls' birthdays, um, as well as um, we actually have this class started rocks. Um, some of the students started as seventh graders, and we have um, some new groups that haven't had the chance to do it yet because we try to have it in groups of about 10 to 12. Um, so it's something that's definitely been very beneficial for them, for students, um, as well as it's good for us, for staff, to think about how to support um, our students. So our next one is going to be student council. Um, Aline, if you can come on up, she's going to share a little bit about um, our canned food drive and other things that student council has planned for um, this coming school year. Is hosting. 
and dances, having fun races, meeting new people, and having fun. I would like student council to become the new voice of middle school. Um, so with our student council, something that we're definitely very proud of is how much um, uh, we raised during the Cantu Drive. Um, that's something that district-wide we always take pride in, um, especially with the middle school having the highest amounts the last couple of years. Um, and that's something that we look forward to the challenge to try to maintain that title here coming up, um, as well as obviously sponsoring. We have an eighth grade farewell dance that's put on completely by um, uh, student council as well as worked by the seventh grade student council members. So. Um, Last one is kind of a combination. So um, when I arrived at the middle school, student or announcements was an adult-driven thing. Um, and so we have since uh, changed that, and it has very been student-driven in that change. Um, so we have a student's announcement team now. Um, they deliver daily announcements over the PA. They cover things like athletics, weather, um, our seven mindset of the month, as well as a, um, a litany of more things, including happy birthday wishes, and then our own um, Addie Porter, who's going to come up next, uh, a joke of the day that she uh, features quite regularly on our morning announcements. So, <laughs> um, Addie has definitely been a driving force behind it, along with Miss Donlin. Um, and so she's kind of sh going to share a combination of things because she's a part of several of these organizations. And then she's also quite the skilled social media footprint. So Janine, just get ready as she gets to high school. That's all I gotta say. Get ready. I'm finally following her since elementary. There you go. There you go. So she put together a video for us that, um, to kind of wrap up the student leadership after she shares what she's been been up to. Addie. <laughs> Hello, my name is Addie Porter, the president of student council, and also one of the members of the announcement team. I like to define student leadership by people who work hard in school and are always an active role model and always want to help others. I also believe that student leadership isn't always just shown in school, but can be shown at sport related events or pretty much anywhere, especially for the student council since they do represent the school. What I like about student leadership is that if there was a student who was struggling with something, I believe that someone who shows student leadership qualities would always help them. What interests me in student council and the announcement team is being able to talk to a lot of people and meet new people. I really want the student council to be well known in the school and I would love for us to do some more fundraisers to help the school and our community just like the hand food drive. Anyways, since I love making videos and editing them, Mr. Krisik asked me to make a video to show you what teachers and students think student leadership consists of. Enjoy! How would you describe student leadership? I would see student leadership as starting new clubs, doing things to make the school a better place, to make the community a better place. It's somebody who's responsible, who uh, helps others when they're needed. Um, I think student leadership should be role models to their peers. Student leadership is when students provide a good example for their peers and encourage everyone to be their best versions of themselves. Should be one that should stand out in class and always take the lead. When I think of student leadership, I think of the students that I have in my classes who are taking ownership over not just themselves, but over the content that we're learning about. And in doing that, they are encouraging the people around them to also take ownership um, over the stuff that they're working on. Yeah. Being a good role model, um, doing the correct things in the classroom, uh, a great listener is a good leadership. sort of people. They can help keep the school planner. I think I want them, and I don't always communicate it well enough, but hopefully this video helps. I want them to, I want to know what their ideas are. I want to know how do we improve the school, how do we do things that make the school a fun place to be, more accepting, more welcoming. Um, those are some things that come to mind. If someone's doing something bad, you know, can I tell them the right thing to do? Like, with respect to your adults, by encouraging their classmates and peers to be respectful, responsible. I think 
showing leadership all comes down to the amount of effort that you are willing to put into whatever you're working on. So if you are in class and you see that there's a big assignment coming up, you can take leadership in putting the work into getting that assignment done, encouraging the people around you to do the work as well. And I think that applies to any team that you're on. So if you're on the basketball team, you take ownership over that sport, you get excited about playing, and then you get everyone else on the team to get excited about it too and to come together for that one goal. So I think that anywhere that you are, you can be a leader just by getting excited about what you're doing and encouraging the people around you to do the same. Nice. So again, thank you to Addie and thank you to every all students who came out. Um, that's kind of a quick snapshot of um, student leadership, um, both formal and informal opportunities that exist in the middle school. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks to all you guys for getting up and sharing. It is amusing to do. <clears throat> Except for maybe Addie. She seems to like uh, flourish with this sort of thing. But I uh, really appreciate you coming and, and sharing and taking the time to come here on Wednesday night and you can be doing something else and, and talking to us for a minute. We really appreciate it. We appreciate your willingness to, at your young ages, to step up and put yourself out there because you kind of are doing it. That's kind of what we do sitting here. You're, you're making yourself a little more vulnerable because other students are looking to you for answers. And I appreciate that we have students in the schools, kids in the schools that are willing to, to take that lead. So I appreciate you guys doing that. If you want to get their photo or something, yeah, we can we'll, get them all together. We won't make you stay for the rest if you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to Lee when she gets to taking your picture. But thank you for being here. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Really good.
Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. The superintendent recommends the board authorize the purchase of one 65 passenger school bus with a lift, uh, integrated chassis, handicap bus from Rush Truck Service, or I'm sorry, yeah, Rush Truck Service, based upon the bids received through the Southwestern Ohio Educational Purchasing Council. The bus is purchased, shall comply with the Ohio School Bus Minimum Construction Standards as published by the Ohio Department of Education. All right, just need a motion and a second, please. So moved. Second. Any other comments about the bus? Uh, no, this will be, we're personally a handicap bus at this meeting. We'll probably be coming back next meeting with, um, with a standard 72 passenger school buses. So we're still working out figures now to decide it's going to be two or three before we get here for the next meeting. Do you, uh, do you recall how long it's been since we bought a bus with a lift? With the lift, uh, it, it's not that long. It's only been about three years. So, because we bought a, we bought another full size handicap bus uh, to help transport. Because anymore, we don't have nearly as many wheelchairs, but we need uh, more seating capacity because we use those for ECC buses also. All right, Mr. Sloan, call the roll, please. Mr. Mundy, yes. Mr. Cox, yes. Ms. Harvey, yes. Mr. Llewellyn, yes. And yes, I'd ask that the uh, school board approve a resolution to declare students and practical transport uh, to their selected schools. Uh, the students are identified in Appendix C. Trying to get out and read the whole resolution if I could. <laughs> so, all right. Any comments about it? Um, just uh, typical for what we do this time of year. Um, numbers are up this year. Um, you know, last year we had right about 84 students. This year we're sitting about 132. Um, and the students that are listed for Spring Valley Academy, we only reimburse them half the cost of transportation because we do provide a morning bus or the option for a morning bus for them. Um, but we just can't meet the times for the afternoon dismissal right now. Mr. Sloan, call the roll, please. Mr. Cox? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Mr. Llewellyn? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Mundy? Yes. <coughs> Item 14, Dr. Townsend. Thank you. Um, we've done the first and second read for our policy, so um, we missed it on the last agenda. So I need a motion and a second that the board adopts, as presented, the proposed policies of the West Carrollton Board of Education. I can read all the numbers if you like. <laughs> so moved. Second. Um, yeah, you can read the numbers if you want, but that's all. Okay. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> all right. Mr. Sloan, call the roll, please. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Mr. Long? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Money? Yes. Mr. Cox? Yes. All right, so that concludes the business part of this meeting. I'm going to take a moment and talk about the student reps that she's not here and I'll share a couple of specifics about Maddie. Uh, Maddie and the other person who we have chosen to join us who will hopefully be here at the next meeting are at Powder Puff game tonight at the high school so that's why they're not here. Uh, both of them are seniors so quite a few senior activities that will probably take them away from this occasion this year but um, that's where they are. But uh, just to mention to you we did select another person to join Maddie so we'll introduce her to you at the next meeting. Um, and then I think we saw, hopefully, a, a preview of a future student rep when Addie just spoke to us. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I will certainly make uh, every effort to let her know she is welcome to apply. Um, so other than that, we do have a uh, roundtable meeting here on the 11th that will be hosted here uh, with some of our fellow districts that have student reps. We'll be working on whatever that project's going to look like, and we'll share that, of course, later, later on after that meeting's over. Uh, other than that, you know, yeah. Can I add something? Yeah. A little bit of a curveball. I was uh, working with Maddie a little bit on that giving closet that uh, I mean, we've been kind of here back and forth and it, everyone got busy, you know how it goes. So, good news is yesterday we got to present to NHS um, the idea of what we want to do with the giving closet. Uh, we do have a location that we have for it, you know, but 
big thing is we have to fill it, right? So we had a little bit of a conversation in the presentation about what to fill, I mean, things to do with it, and uh, I'm trying to get NHS's buy-in so that they can maybe host a drive or something like that to uh, gain the items necessary so that we can fill this closet without <coughs> I mean, really buying at all, you know? So um, it was kind of a nice presentation. Of course, it was extremely early in the morning, so none of them probably were even awake, let alone, <laughs> like, they're half paying attention, you can tell by looking at them, but um, it was kind of nice to at least lay it out on the table for them to uh, see that, I mean, the giving closet is a thing that we want to do, we want to move forward with, and I think uh, we might have uh, NHS help us with, uh, with what we want to do, so it's pretty exciting. All right, very good, thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, so we'll move on to committee reports. Does anybody have a committee report to share? Um, the only thing I'll kind of add to this um, is the OSBA conference is coming up in November. So before we meet again, that conference will be over. And uh, we do have um, two new members who will likely be on our board in January, who are on the ballot as write-ins, who will be attending that conference, uh, Lori and Key. We're looking forward to some time with you guys and, and uh, get, having you get a chance to see what that's like. It is a, a huge conference in Columbus, so that'll be taking place between now and the 18th. We'll share some information about how that goes and what we learned while we're there. Um, but other than that, we'll move on to comments from our shooting Yes, I'm looking forward to the conference. Um, I'd like to thank the community and the board for attending the groundbreaking. It was <coughs> a very nice ceremony and very well attended. And I'd also like to thank our youth leadership at the middle school. I do hear Addie's jokes in the morning when I come in, and um, they are cute. <laughs> They're funny. They've always, I always wait to walk in the front door to hear it. So um, I'd like to thank the kids for everything that they do as well. So that's all I have. Cruising through this meeting. All right, um, we'll go to Mr. Sloan next. Any comments, sir? Yes, uh, I'll give you a, a three page handout um, so regarding property values and state funding. And, um, as we know, all school districts are required to do a five year forecast at least by the end of every November and the end of every May. And districts can do forecasts anytime throughout the year, but at a minimum, we have to do them at those two times. So. Uh, our five-year forecast will be on the agenda uh, at our next meeting. Um, but I just wanted to just go over some information real quick. That just, um, kind of on the revenue side, the kind of the big variables that affect us and every school across the state, um, and a lot of it is just a lot of it just deals with um, the, the property value increases that um, that are affected about half the counties across the state of Ohio. Um, so the first page here is House Bill 187. Um, I'm sure we, everybody has, we got a lot of emails. If you remember a lot of emails in September and early October, you know, from OSBA about House Bill 187 and the, the Ohio House, they did pass House Bill 187 on October 11th. Um, the Senate has, I think they call it like a companion bill, a similar bill is in the Senate, and I think the Senate will start hearing, they'll start addressing that bill um, in a couple weeks. Um, so if, if we assume that the Senate is going to is going to pass a version similar to the House, and then if the governor passes, and then if the governor signs it just approximately December 1st or December 15th, then um, like this, uh, this information, you know, this what this is trying to do it wouldn't take effect until mid-March. And um, just as an example, like back in July, Carl Keith gave information to all the school districts and cities and counties, or, or uh, the townships and cities and school districts across the county and, and told us that um, for next year that we would see, you know, we could see residential values increasing about 35 or 40%. And then homeowners got their notices in the mail with that similar information probably around August. Um, so what House Bill 187 is trying to do is trying to minimize the increase in property values that people see um, next year.
year. Um, and I spoke with a guy at the county today, and he said that, um, and numbers-wise, what's that? What that could likely mean is that um, instead, like for West Carrollton, um, like our number was actually 39 percent. So, like on so on average, he said that in West Carrollton schools, the average residential increase would would be 39 percent. But if House Bill 187, you know, if, and if the Senate and the governor pass this, then instead of that being a 39 percent increase. It's likely to be about a 26 percent increase but the problem is that this law wouldn't take effect until mid-march because it's a 90-day thing so what's likely to happen is that you know, the county auditor like they do their bills around the end of december early january so so when people get their property tax bills in january it's going to be based on a 39 percent increase and then and if we make the assumption that this is going to pass in March, then what the county auditor is going to have to do is that when they do the second half bills, they're going to have to figure out what the total should have been for the whole year of 2024 and then do an adjustment on the second half. So it's, it's going to create a, a mess for county auditors and a smaller mess for school districts and cities and townships to figure out you know, what the revenue is for the you know for the upcoming year, um, and so meanwhile, you know, while districts have to do a forecast here you know, within the next few weeks, then you know, we have to make an assumption what's going to happen with this legislation with our property values for next year and, and so forth. So that's kind of the point of why I'm sharing that information with you. Um, so on the next page, the second page is just a history of our property values uh, since 1991. We have a reappraisal or an update every three years. Um, down at the bottom, the bottom half of the sheet, uh, so in 2023, over on the far right, so it's saying our total value was about 467 million. And then under that, um, there, it says that in fact on July 27th, the county auditor told us that we were looking at a potential 39% increase in resident in our home, in our residential values and the total increase would be 28% or the 599 million. Um, then the bottom line is, in, is just based, it's kind of a repeat of, of what I, uh, you know, of what I said in terms of the information I got from the county auditor saying that if House Bill 187, if it actually becomes law in 2024, that we would be looking at a 26% increase and a total valuation over on the far right of about 555 million, so so a total of a 19 percent increase as opposed to a 28 percent increase. So as I'm just finalizing the forecast, I'm thinking that you know I will do the forecast based on evaluation of 555 million dollars because just making the assumption that the house since the house passed this legislation that the Senate's going to agree because it's going to minimize the tax increase that people see in 2024. And on the third page is just regarding our, our state funding. Um, so on line one, in the 22-23 school year, we received $21.3 million. On line two, which is FY24, but right now we're currently in fiscal year 24, so our state funding is 23.5 million. So that is, uh, so we actually are seeing a 2.2 million or 10.3 percent increase in our state funding. Um, and I mean that's that's a, a lot of districts across the states are seeing increases of <coughs> eight, eight, nine, ten percent, and that's just due to the state um, putting a lot of money into K-12 this year um, because of the great financial shape that the state was in. Um, then on line five, so that line is, so back in the summer when ODE gave us, ODE did simulations telling us what our projected funding was for 20, fiscal 24 and fiscal 25. So um, in the summer of 23, you know, back a couple months ago, ODE told us that you know, we would get state funding of 24.2 million, but, um, which would be about 2.9% increase. And, and they were basing that on our value being 520 million. But then if you go to line 11, so um, 
our, our, our finding per, you know, per line 11, would, it would be about 400,000 less than line five, it'd be 23.8. If, if our values were the 599 million, but then the middle scenario is on line eight, saying that our revenue would be somewhere in the middle, so it would be about 24 million, or about a 2.2% increase if House Bill 187 passes and our value ends up being in that $555 million neighborhood. So the point is, you know, we don't know, you know, until we find out if a small passes, we don't know where our value is gonna be, but one of the main points is that the higher your value is, when, when, you, when you get higher property valuation, the state considers you well, you're wealthier per pupil, and then that that decreases your state funding a little bit. So just just kind of big picture, just trying to explain the relationship between you know, higher property values can cut your state funding a little bit. But regardless, we still should be looking at an increase in state funding for 24-25. It's just a matter of how big that increase will be. And then the last thing is um, down that line, 14, 15, 16, maybe another variable. And our revenue is our enrollment. And line 14, 15, 16 say that you know, this shows that you know, we were down about 18 kids last year. And uh, I mean, we're still early in the year here in FY24, but um, you know, according to ODE, in terms of how they are funding us, we are down um, about 100 kids from, from, F, from 22, 23 school year. So um, hopefully that number ends up being higher and that it levels off, but you know, just making the point that our enrollment is another variable in our forecast that we constantly monitor. Um, so that's about it. Um, so I figured the more I talk tonight, the less I would talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was good. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> uh, we'll move on to uh, comments from Central Office staff. Mr. Berry, any comments? Wanted to compliment the middle school um, students and uh, and Mr. Chris and Captain. They did a really good job presenting. I mean, it's always good to see our students come and speak. It's a good opportunity, good experience for them, and a good opportunity for us to get to know them and see them in action. All right, uh, this ties. Not sure why I turned that off. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with what Devin said. Um, uh, we'd like to see some uh, boys out from the middle school too. We were noticing that the video—it was all girls, it was all girls <laughs> and the video was all full of girls. So we need to encourage the boys to become strong leaders too. Um, yeah, they did a great job. Other than that, nothing. Thank you. And even, if you, even if you equate that to the student reps, we've only had one guy, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And all females up yeah. here with us as well. So for the most part, the college. Ms. Jones. All right, girl power. Um, I just wanted to comment quickly on rocks. So this is this is the start of their third year, and um, I was invited to a handful of meetings last year just to sit in. Um, they meet usually in the middle of the day, like from 10 to uh, 12 to 1 um, around lunchtime. And so uh, it it really is um, a wonderful supportive group for the for the girls. Um, they were you know tackling some hard topics, um, but felt very you could tell very um, open and comfortable and sharing. So they even have a really cool, funky room decorated at the middle school. And it has pink puffy chairs and um, neon lighting around the, it that you know pulsates and you know it's a little psychedelic. But it, it's a, nonetheless, it's a it's a great space for for them and the the group um, has been going strong now, starting its third year. So um, just a, you know, I feel. A, you know, it's an opportunity to be a part of, you know, something that is so supportive for our, for our girls. Very good. Mr. Hay? Uh, yeah, again, kudos to the middle school kids. Um, great presentation, good to see, good to see how active they are, and it sounds like they're all pretty engaged. And uh, I think we can't ask for much more for seventh and eighth graders and getting them engaged in school, and I think that's a great thing. And yes, the announcements, I was wondering, you know, when you walk in and you hear them sometimes, and you're like, Okay, that's not Miss Kenzer's voice. Whose voice is that on there? So now, so now I understand what I'm listening to. Face with a name. Yeah. One more over there who does it with her. Yeah. I'm sure the neighbors who live all through here that hear it on the loudspeaker outside the middle school might wonder whose voice that is, but in a different tone than I do at 7:30 in the morning. <laughs> We will move on to 
comments from the board, and we will start with Autumn. Old curveball. Yeah, it's not Nate this time. Right. <laughs> um, so I don't have nearly um, the amount of things to say that we need to have. But, uh, I just want to. None of us do. Thank the middle <laughs> schoolers for coming out tonight, and I just like to know and see that you know there is excitement. And well, uh, in keeping with everybody, um, I, I wanted to start off with saying that this month should be thankful since it is Thanksgiving. And so I wanted to thank our middle school students for their presentation. I think they did a really great job. And Mr. Krisik, he is phenomenal at motivating these kids and uh, I really appreciate that because a lot of times the middle school can be a little difficult to motivate um, but they all seem really excited about all of it and the dance and uh, they want to do more dances and they're, they're raising um, money for great organizations um, so that is a great thing to to keep going um, and the student announcements team, I'm going to have to get a uh, message over there about the tents. <laughs> <laughs> so I will be uh, doing that. And again, on my thankful, we're going to get an extra hour of sleep. Thankful <laughs> for that. So that's all I have. Thanks. Absolutely. That was a pleasant thing to learn. I didn't know I was really that fun to do yet. Joe? Um, echo the same thing. The middle school students did a great job presenting. Um, our next meeting, we will know who the next two board members will be. Uh, Autumn and I are both not running again, so we'll have uh, new team members. Um, I'll be stepping out, so will Autumn. Not, we did not run again this year. Um, congratulations to all of our fall sports going into winter sports. Uh, we've had some uh, good wins and some bad losses, but it happens. It's all a learning experience. Visit on Thanks. All right, Nate, you're up, buddy. All right, I only got 25 things to say, so I'll get started. Okay. Uh, well, you know, of course, to get started, uh, of course, you talked about it a little bit. This, uh, this election is coming up on the 7th, so uh, be sure to be out there and vote. That's always an important thing. Look on, uh, you know, we have two write ins that's filling in. Um, your guys' spots. So look at uh, look into it. See who your write-ins are. You can ask your polling location uh, for a write-in sheet, so you can kind of see who they are a little bit. Um, but it's always important to understand what you're voting for, who you're voting for. So always do your research, but definitely go out there and vote. That's a really important thing um, about voting. I'm really bummed. I'm going to be missing the community action board meeting. Which, There's only so many days ahead, Nate. You know, <laughs> out of all days, uh, sadly it's on the 7th. I'm sorry. Uh, so I don't think I'll be able to make it. Uh, we usually did the last week in October, and we didn't do it because I was very confident. But you know what, uh, it's also understandable. So, um, you know, but I'm excited to hear how it goes. I'm sure it's going to go great. Uh, it always does. But, um, you yeah, know, I, I know uh, it's going to be a good time. Also, the groundbreaking um, was incredible. Uh, it was good to see Carl Keith there and some other amazing people. Um, also, Monster Mash went really well. I was really happy that we had a pretty good turnout at Monster Mash. Um, hopefully, it'll be bigger next year. I always like seeing those community events um, getting bigger and bigger. And uh, that's all I got. Well, of course, I got the quote. And uh, it's by Mel Robbins, which she does some really amazing books as well. But um, her quote is, don't tell people your dreams. Show them. Thanks, guys. All right, you almost stepped on the comment I was going to make about the groundbreaking, but you didn't. So I appreciate that. Uh, I want to I want to thank uh, Dr. Townsend, and Jack Hay, and Jim Bolker, and Maddie McCune, who all shared during the groundbreaking yesterday uh, for the for the role you played. And anybody who helped set those chairs up, it was really really nice uh, the way it was set up and. I just want to thank everybody involved in that, and especially Jack. Um, he probably spoke the longest, which was great because can't you, shut me up. You, well, <laughs> you, you included you included a lot of people that 
for OFCC people, for instance, that hadn't been recognized until you, I don't think, I don't think we talked about them, until you said something. So I really appreciated you took the time to do that. And, um, you know, we didn't freeze too bad. So right in our face, we couldn't see anything in front of us. But, uh, <laughs> but I really appreciate you taking the time to put all that together and, and share and um, make sure that not anybody that was there didn't feel left out because you covered just about everybody that, that you could have. So, and I know some of it was repetitive, but that's all great. So a couple years from now, when we actually see the, the first building open, I don't know that we have to set it up like that again, but that was that was pretty neat. And then I guess the next time it's a ribbon cutting, actually, right? Like we had the big scissors for it the last time. Um, so we'll look forward to that, of course. Uh, just two quick uh, comments other than that. Um, I wasn't told to do this, but I'm going to do this out of just um, assistance to city council. Um, in addition to what Nate's talking about with the election, um, pr provided that Mr. Barnhart gets one vote, it's all he's going to need since he's the only person running for mayor in Wisconsin. There will be a city council seat that will be open because as soon as he takes the oath as mayor, his seat will be vacant. So I was asked if I could to just share, since there are you know hundreds of people who watch this, that um, there will be a vacancy for city council starting January 1st. They will have to fill. So anybody out there who's interested in running for city council, know that there will be uh, an application process and you will have the opportunity to serve in West Carrollton on city council. So just doing that, doing my job there, helping other, I want them to do it for us. So, uh, but again, um, appreciate everybody being here tonight. And uh, if there's nothing else, I'll look for a motion and a second to adjourn. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Cox? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Mr. Luan? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Bundy? Yes. 